Hello and welcome to this Infinite Runner engine tutorial. I'm Reno from More Mountains and today I'm gonna talk to you about playable characters in the engine. The Infinite Runner engine allows for the creation of a lot of different games. Uh, you can create a platformer runner, you can create a plane game uh, like this one, you can create a jumping cloud game, uh, really the possibilities are endless. To accommodate for this wide range of possible gameplay styles for your player, the engine includes a base playable uh, character class used as a single interface by all other classes that you'll need to extend if you want to create a new playstyle. So uh, today we're going to see how how this works and how you can create you know your own uh, player. You can of of course also uh, simply reuse one of the existing example character controls included in the asset, and you know we're going to see all that today. So uh, here I've opened uh, the cave racer. Um, class that allows the control of the uh, sky theory plane. Uh, if we look at it in details you'll see that this one extends uh, a class called rocket. So uh, if we go into uh, that declaration you'll see that rocket is a higher level class than uh, cave racer and uh, this one what it does is basically as long as you press the main action button uh, you're boosting which means your your rocket will go higher and uh, if you release it you are not boosting anymore which means you'll fall due to gravity so that's all this class does and the difference between the rocket and the cave racer is that uh, the rocket doesn't care about you know um, particle effects, uh, smoke, uh, rotation, stuff like that. It's really just basic movement. And if we go even a, a level higher, we go into the playable character class. Uh, this time we are at the, the top level. Uh, you see it only extends mono behavior. And uh, playable character will be the interface between your specific character and uh, the input manager. So um, let, let's have a look at uh, you know what this class does. It's not meant to be added directly to a prefab or game object. It's meant to be extended. Uh, it contains a lot of bathe methods common to all player characters. Uh, it takes care of all the hard work for you. Uh, for example, you will have initialization. It will grab you know the components and parts and so on and make the proper checks. Uh, it handles collisions. It handles uh, the distance to the ground computation, uh, which is here. So uh, that's done, you know, for all your characters. You don't have to handle that again. It's really useful in, mo in most, you know, platformers and stuff. Um, what else do we have? Uh, it will determine if you're grounded or not. Uh, it will check the death conditions for you. Uh, it handles the character bounds. Uh, you also have, you know, uh, basic stuff for animators uh, reset of the position you know if you want your your character maybe it's been pushed away by some block and you want it to uh, get back in in position uh, that's also handled by this base class so really it's the common de denominator for all uh, characters and of course you'll have here uh, the input interface so these are the methods that you'll need to override if you want something special to happen uh, in your character. For example, if we go back to the rocket, uh, you'll see that it doesn't do much really. Uh, it just declares uh, a fly mm -hmm. force, uh, maximum velocity, at update, uh, which is an override. It's, it's really just uh, the playable characters uh, in, in a different order. So we have the distance to the ground, update animator, stuff like that, and really we just fly, which is the new method. And what fly does is uh, if we are bo boosting we add a force uh, a, an up force uh, multiplied by the fly force so really it's just it's just one line uh, that makes your rocket fly based on the playable character so if you were to create uh, i don't know a bird or whatever maybe you'd reuse the rocket but if you wanted to create your own which maybe adds a, a different force in a different direction or whatever uh, that that's all the code you'd, ha you'd have to uh, to write and it's really simple and that fly method you know it, it checks for a boosting uh, value a float uh, boolean uh, and this is where you set the boolean to 
true or false depending on whether the button main action button has been pressed or released that's all there is now if you want to add a playbook character in your scene uh, you have to remember that you should not put the prefab in the scene like uh, I did here in this example uh, the reason for that is that of course it would work uh, let's press play and you'll see what happens uh, it works you you have your prefab in the scene but the one that you control uh, is the one from the level manager so that's where you have to set it uh, so don't put the prefab in the scene instead create a prefab out of it uh, I already have one for my uh, cave racer here uh, and in the level manager here you can set the number of playable characters that you want and then you can assign one here so uh, well this one is already set but if I were to uh, set it again I would just you know click on the prefab here and drag it into my playable characters array um, most games only have you know one playable character but you can have more if you want uh, and really that's that's where and how you set the character for your scene now uh, let's have a look at all the other um, character controllers that are included in the demos um, let's start with the minimal 2d demo levels so if you're not familiar with it uh, you can basically all you can do is uh, press uh, the main action button and it makes you jump the longer you press the higher you jump that's all there is uh, so this is done using the jumper class so what the jumper class does is uh, as the others uh, well all uh, character controllers in the infinite run engine really uh, it just extends the playable character defines a bunch of stuff and uh, mostly when you press the main action start uh, well the main action button starts um, you call the jump method the jump method does some checks and performs the jump which means uh, it will you know apply force and so on well, it actually changes the velocity um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff uh, mostly to handle the release of the button stuff like that uh, then moving on we have um, if I go into the Fabi Cloud demo uh, and press play here, as you can see it's some sort of uh, flappy bird clone uh, the, every time I press the main action button I jump a little uh, this is done using uh, I think it's called the flappy class uh, I'm just gonna check flappy cloud is here uh, yeah flappy class and as you can see uh, this one also extends playable character it also listens for game events um, and uh, all there is is uh, well it's really close to the jumper class uh, same same thing it listens for the, the main action button to start and uh, when it's pressed you know you uh, just uh, up the velocity a little it made sense uh, to make a different class because really uh, this one does different stuff uh, in terms of release of the button and so on uh, then we have the dragon uh, controller this one is used in the backwards dragon demo so if I press play here we have the game view every time I, I press uh, the main action button I jump a little uh, and if we have a look at the dragon controller as you can see this one extends the flappy uh, class that we just saw so uh, uh, it takes the same base mechanics but it will add another layer uh, of animations of uh, explosions when you die uh, different behavior for the camera uh, mm -hmm. really stuff like that so it's really a good um, a good idea to separate the logic uh, create a controller that will handle um, really the movement the, the velocity of the object the gravity stuff like that and then add another layer 
that will handle the explosions, the animations, the stuff like that, that really is just purely visual. That way you can tweak things separately and it, I, personally I, I think it's a, a much better way to build your software. Um, then we have the rocket, uh, the rocket we saw earlier on in the Sky Theory demo. It's already uh, uh, you press the button, you apply a vertical force, you release, you stop applying the force, uh, which gives you this this nice uh, mechanics. And um, if if that was not clear, uh, something that is really important to uh, keep in mind is that and if I change the view, it's uh, maybe a bit more obvious. Uh, the, um, the plane isn't moving apart from the y-axis. The background is moving. Uh, the elements that are coming at me, you know, the coins and the obstacles, really hard to play in this, in this sort of isometric view, but uh, um, really the plane is only moving on the y-axis. That, that's what also makes the engine really a breeze to work with, is that it's really simple. You just have to throw things at it, and uh, you know they, they come at me like that, and I move the background, but if I, if I go back to uh, my game view, really it gives you the uh, sensation that you're flying across the sky and uh, that you know everything is moving really fast and so on. Um, really a nice trick. Um, so we've seen that. What else is there? We have the the lane runner. So uh, the lane runner, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's uh, a game where you you play using uh, left and right, and you you move on specific lanes. Or you cannot move in between these lanes, or I mean uh, stop in between these lanes. So I'm stuck doing that. Um, if I think uh, this one is called left right move, oh, it's lane runner actually. So, yeah, the lane runner, um, on the same principle as the others, uh, it's based on whether or not you've pressed the left button or the right button, and if you have, uh, it starts a coroutine that moves you to that specific lane. Pretty simple stuff. Um, what else if i just go uh you can find all the scripts of course into playable character here um and uh into the specific demos for the controls that are really uh, specific for example uh, another demo i'd like to show you is flight of the albatross so this one also use another controller i tried to create a new controller per demo so uh, gives you more examples to to pick from but uh, really there's no limit you could have a controller that rolls in circles you could have a controller that uh, you know really uh, could have a bicycle controller that's a good idea I think I'd like to do a, a bike game next um, so this one I just press left and right and as you can see I move my um, albatross on top of the waves and stuff so um, this one uses the albatross controller uh, which will handle, you know, the animation of the albatross, which will handle uh, the slight rotation it takes when I move left or right. Um, so it, it's really basic, but it extends uh, free left to right movement, which itself extends playable character. And uh, free left to right movement, as the name implies, will allow you, when you press left or when you press right, to uh, move at a certain speed and respecting a certain movement inertia, uh, left from right or right from left well you know left and right um and yeah that, that's pretty much all you need to know uh, about playable characters in the infinite runner engine i hope you learned something new today i'll see you in the next tutorial bye